from the vault, high atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Good afternoon and welcome to Talking Catholic, the official podcast of the Camden Diocese. This is Mary McCusker, and I'm here today, um, not at the vault, at 1845 Haddon Avenue, the Catholic Charities Headquarters, with some wonderful guests who are my colleagues, and I'm here with Mike Walsh. How are you? I'm fine, Mary, and yourself? I'm well, much are, better I, I, than um, one week ago on this day. I, as, yeah, we're going to be talking about the JFA uh, all for this podcast and uh, what happened, but uh, for you and I and a few others who were really burning the candle at both ends to, to make sure it got off on time, uh, I think uh, this has been a recovery couple of days for us, right? Have you, do you feel like you've quite recovered yet? About 80%. 80%. Still have a little way to go, but... I'm about there. I hear you. The um, you know I, I just want to let everyone know as far as uh, events that are coming up that uh, you can always check the Camden Diocese uh, website at camdendiocese.org and go to the events page. We have everything, almost everything listed in the diocese there, and certainly all the major events. For instance, Man Up South Jersey, which is coming up on Saturday, November 9th. Um, you can still buy tickets uh, for that, and certainly you can always refer back to um, our previous episode with. Uh, Anthony Scafidi and Deacon Anthony Sio, where they uh, went, uh, we went through chapter and verse about what you could expect from this year's uh, Man Up South Jersey. So, going back to the JFA, what do you think, how did you think it went, and who do we have with us today? Well, I think it went pretty well overall. I think anything that went wrong, hopefully nobody noticed, and just <laughs> you and me noticed on the back end. That is, that is the key to event management. That's exactly what we do. Yes. So overall, it went well. Um, our three guests who are here today all spoke at the event and all were um, played a big part in, in planning the event and um, helping coordinate the day of, which is not an easy task. So can I ask you all to introduce yourselves? Uh, my name is Jose Sanchez, and I am the coordinator of the Community Resource Warehouse. Hello, everybody. I'm Samantha Astley. I'm the volunteer coordinator here at Catholic Charities. Kevin Hickey, executive director at Catholic Charities. Nice to see you, Mary. And you as well. Nice to see Mike bringing uh, the podcast on the road, as it were. Yeah, no, nice. it's, you know, we, we love leaving the vault. It was it's, nice to have you here. But it, I figured instead of uh, making you all come downtown, I'd, I would come to you guys. My, Especially my, because our cubicles are all right next to each other, literally. So oh, wow. yeah, it only makes true. sense that you come here on and this yet, dreary, every, rainy day. And yet, every time <laughs> I come here, I never see any of you. It's the weird thing. It's like you all escape. It's, like, it's almost like we're working sometimes, you know? It's so strange. It's so weird. It's like... Don't these people? Well, have I'm, I'm thinking, I'm imagining. Do they somehow know you're in the building and want to uh, escape <laughs> your eyesight? I always assume Which that, could the, be. that the the person running the, the front desks like 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 Tells announces me as I'm as I'm coming in. It's like everyone, clear out. Mike's here. Calm down. You're not that important. <laughs> Got to knock I him down a few pegs every now like and then. These uh, two, uh, Jose and uh, Samantha, are well used to Mr. Walsh sort of press ganging them into service, and so they're on to him now, and they might want to like scurry. What do you think, Jose? Well, I, usually what happens is that Mike is taller than the cubicles, so we can spot him, <laughs> and then we just scurry around toward the IT area that nobody wants to go to, so we're hiding behind uh, Tim <laughs> Davis over there. <laughs> That's that's the I, I I'm glad I can offer that opportunity for people to get away. That's but nice. Poor Samantha. I'm sorry, Sam. I don't know how tall you are, but not tall enough to see over the cubicles. <laughs> it helps me escape from everybody because nobody can see me over the cubicles. Ah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so uh, so the JFA was last Thursday. It's uh, as we're recording this. I think it was all of uh, six days ago, and. Uh, and I think from all accounts, it was a, a successful event. Uh, we had about 550 people in attendance at the, the ballroom at resorts in Atlantic City. Um, of course, as you know, we've talked about, our guest of honor was pulled away by Pope Francis to the consistory in, uh, at the Vatican, but uh, he was kind enough to send us a video message just for the people of the Diocese of Camden and the, the guests at Catholic Charities event, which uh, actually at the end of this episode, I'm going to put up his remarks so that everybody can hear it, because uh, they were really quite 
quite touching. Um, and for anyone who didn't come to the event, shame on you. But our main honoree, Mike, didn't mention his name, is Cardinal Louis Antonio oh, Tagli, right, sure. mm-hmm. um, who's the Archbishop of Manila, and he's the president of Caritas Internationalis. That's correct. And uh, I don't know. What, what about you? You've been through 16 of these events, Kevin. I thought it was very good. Uh, it's helpful for other people to say, as a number of people said who've been to many of them, it was they thought the best or one of the best. It was the second uh, most well-attended event, so that's good. Um, what was the first, Mr. Hickey? The first what? The, the third, highest I mean, attended event. 612 people oh my goodness. at Adelphia Ballroom. Wow. Yeah, And I, I'm sorry, I can't remember when that was. But, yeah. That's a lot. It was wow. crowded. Yeah. The uh, one day we'll beat it. That's my goal. One day, my my goal is to beat that and to actually end at exactly nine o'clock. We've ended at nine o three, nine o five, and nine o five. I'm like, mm, one of these days we're going to end at nine. <laughs> <laughs> I have few. Is the one the one thing I have control over is the program, and one of these days we're going to end on time. For which he unfairly blames me. No, no, no. For it's your fault. I wasn't going to bring it up, but it was your fault. I don't like siding with Mike, but you did go a little bit <laughs> off script. About thirty seconds over. <laughs> 30 seconds Well, over. you were dramatically looking minutes. at your watch every two seconds that he was speaking and I was shaking he, your head. I was, and I was hoping he'd see me from the stage, but that didn't, that didn't happen. It was hard to see. The light yeah, right, the it was very bright. bright up there. Yeah. You, could, you knew people were out there, but you couldn't exactly make them out. And he did have a lot of people to thank. He did. And, you he know. did. and he did digress a lot, so that, that eats up time, too. That's all right. That's fine. Wow. It's okay. <laughs> he mumbles to himself off mic. Um, you mentioned the, that um, Sam and Jose are often wrangled into things, mm-hmm. which they are. I, I don't even know how many committees and meetings and subcommittees you guys are part of, but I feel like you're a part of just about everything. And you two were contacted to to speak at the event. No, that, and that, that I remember right. Mike coming up to me and saying, Samantha seems very nervous, and Jose isn't speaking at all. <laughs> I said, don't worry. They'll be fine. And they were. You guys were amazing. Well, the reason I wasn't speaking was because I was in charge of all the volunteers and making sure that the people, the 550-plus people, got to the same place at the same time at a reasonable time. Oh, yeah. You know, this so is, at this I, event, you don't just have one job. You, we give you multiple jobs when you rope, we rope seven you into hats. something. That's, that's right. <laughs> Not only were you sending people to the, our event, you were sending people to other events, too. That was very kind of you. You were... Uh, it was the show, but um, I didn't get to see the show or <laughs> talk to the people from the show or anything like that. But I think it was interesting. It kept everybody very busy. Yeah. Nobody seemed very bored. But everybody seemed to have a good time, though. I, much like Mr. Hickey, I, I haven't heard a negative thing yet. Um, it, and I'm very, very pleased about that. Because when you're putting together an event like this, you, you just never know. So, you know, kind of going backwards a little bit. Uh, how did we? How did you come up with uh, the? De- how, who, how was the decision made to honor Cardinal Tagle, uh, Kevin? Well, I, uh, Mike, as I recall, it was December of 2017. How's that for a pretty <laughs> wow. specific recollection? That's impressive. And it was a breakfast meeting with Bishop Sullivan, which mm-hmm. you were attended, yeah. and it was uh, it was soon after the. Uh, 2016 dinner when Cardinal Tobin was honored and that was our first time being at resorts and uh, I would say everybody at that breakfast uh, which included Jim Lanahan, Father Hughes, Father Romano, yourself and Bishop Sullivan, everybody was very enthused, great venue and so the discussion was uh, occurred around honoring a woman in leadership and at the same time, uh, Bishop had just uh, inaugurated the Share the Journey here in the Diocese of Camden. So we started talking about Sister Norma Pimentel, and she was going to be honored in 2018. And then we talked about His Eminence, uh, Cardinal Togli, Archbishop of the Philippines, who, and we noted that Share the Journey fell under Caritas Internationalis, which, as Mary said, uh, Cardinal Tagli is president of that. So we said, well, let's go for him in 2019. And, of course, I don't think any of us thought we were going to secure him. 
but uh, thanks to Bishop and that his vision for all this, because I think he really wanted to commemorate uh, the share of the journey in the diocese. So he said, go ahead. And I'll, I'll give uh, uh, thanks to Mary and another colleague, Mustafa Alduri, because we went up, and that, this was a, f- a very lovely memory for me. It was a fun day. We went to, I found out that His Eminence would be at the United Nations, and it was May of 2018. And so I took Mary and Mustafa because of their wonderful personalities, and I said, okay, uh, I want to smile at this guy, and I want, we, the whole goal was to impress upon him that we really wanted him to come here. And um, so we were sort of, it was, I, in my imagination, it was every time he turned around, he'd see one of us grinning at him or something, right? He probably got creepy to, to an Possibly. extent. I had Possibly. a grin on yes. my face the entire time we were there. <laughs> and this is why you might recall I, I spent uh, some time thanking Joe Donnelly, mm-hmm. who is at Caritas Internalis, Internationalis. He's head of their delegation at the U.N. Uh, it's no exaggeration to say without Joe, we would not have secured Cardinal Togli. Um, he, Joe is a friend of Catholic Charities generally, um, and I've known him for some years. Uh, Mary and Mustafa met him. Mustafa, in fact, was a featured speaker at the UN that day, so that probably helped too. Uh, so, but Joe, uh, I'm sure, was talking to the Cardinal. Uh, yeah, you could do this. In fact, I recall Joe saying to the Cardinal, "You know, you could uh, do this when you're here in the United States for such and such meeting." So. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, Joe Donnelly uh, played a key role in behind all this. And um, as, as we all know, Joe was on the video uh, talking about Cardinal Tackley. So that's the uh, story. And, and I just, I was, you know, by the way, um, folks, uh, Mr. Walsh was chastising me for talking too much. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to stay true to form. So the other, <laughs> the, the, the other thing I wanted to say, I wanted to tell the anecdote about his eminence and the last thing he said to us when we were saying goodbye to him in May of 2018. You know, he shakes our hand, and we've taken a number of pictures. He walks away, and he gets maybe five to ten yards away. It's right in front of the United Nations. He turns around, and he has this grin on his face, and he says, see you in Camden. <laughs> and then turned around and walked away. And, of course, I was just, I was dumbfounded. You know? And I thought, okay, you know, you sort of thought, okay, he's playful. So he was somewhat having fun with us. Uh, but it, I thought, okay, we've succeeded. We, we got it into his head that we really want him to come here. So Wow, that's that is that is beautiful attempts at coercion. I got to tell you, that, that is really impressive, yeah. Mr. Hickey. I'm imp- but then Pope Francis to use your took powers for, us. for good. Yeah, I like that. Oh, wow. that's right. Well, the other now, the, uh, Mike, you if you know uh, you know Mustafa Alduri, mm-hmm. who's our colleague, who is guest on the show before. Guest sure. on the show, uh, uh, a good talker, as uh, Jose Sanchez could attest to. <laughs> he. He, uh, when he spoke in front of the uh, Committee on Migration, uh, because that was why the Cardinal was there that day, the, the goal was each speaker would speak for two minutes. And they had a number of speakers lined up, including Mustafa. Mustafa talked 20 minutes. <laughs> That's I, right? right. And nobody else spoke. That is not shocking. Yes. And they allowed him to do it. <laughs> not without elbows to his side. I There were a few of those coming from me. You would try to get him to yeah, move along. And take pictures at the same time, which yeah. is a, but of course that's, quite a task. You know, that's, um, uh, I think uh, the Diocese Catholic Charities Agency has a reputation for uh, being dynamic and being filled with uh, a lot of good people and... Uh, you know, my memory is Mustafa was riveting, mm-hmm. um, and and why not? Just, oh, he does have a great story, no yeah. doubt. Which we, I think you'd have to go back a year or two. This is the last time we found him on the podcast, but he gave his presentation here, yeah. and it is it is incredible. Yeah. He's quite an asset to Catholic charities in general, but certainly adds to the ability to co- coerce people into doing things. So that's always good. To have. You have a lot of great personalities mm-hmm. at Catholic charities. Not a, not a bland one in the bunch. I love the personalities here. Yeah. 
<laughs> the uh, so okay, so that's how we get Cardinal Tagli on board. Um, so, but, but we weren't just honoring him; we were also honoring uh, a number of Disciples of Mercy, local uh, people who are doing great works in the in the diocese. And then uh, the end, we had, the last year, we were offering the uh, Share the Journey Award. That's correct as well. Right. Um, so, so how did the Disciples of Mercy come up? Well, people throughout the diocese were invited to nominate people from their parishes, and there were a lot of nominations that came in this year, and the the honorees were just phenomenal. We've got a lot of compliments um, about them. You know, they're all doing different types of work, but ultimately with the same mission. And, I mean, it's a great reminder to Catholic Charity staff, to everyone that, you know, we do our work here, but there are people all over the diocese doing work too, and they don't get any spotlight, and they don't want any spotlight. They were infuriatingly humble, <laughs> so much that when I called them to tell them about their awards, every single one of them said, I don't deserve that. You know, this person deserves it, or this group deserves it. They, you know, nobody was, um, they were reluctant to accept the award, just very, very humble. And one of them, I won't name names, was reluctant to even go up on the stage <laughs> the oh, really? night of Justice for All. And I well, said, I you that. need to get up there now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, nobody, they are wonderful when people. I, when I pushed them up. so I, that's, Well, I, yeah, I you, you did push them right up on the stage with hey, Bishop. Listen, but I'm they, a very forceful person. <laughs> They were a great group this year. They really were. They, actually, they really were. And actually, Jose helped me again uh, there as well. He was uh, my translator for uh, for our first or second. Uh, first, I think. Just, just three three sentences at the most. That's all. <laughs> that, that's all I needed, and I couldn't do it myself. So I appreciate you helping out with that, too. The um, uh, Jose, fortunately, is a, a multitasker, which, which is why he gets pulled yes, into things is. all the time. So we had the, so it was five Disciples of Mercy, right? Five, that's right. And One from each deanery. All right. And for anyone who doesn't know what a deanery is, uh, a diocese is a portion of the Catholic Church, and a deanery is a geographical area of each diocese, and there are parishes which are geographical areas inside each deanery. The, like, yeah, everyone knows that's what a too much. No. <laughs> well, everybody knows what a I parish like is. It. Well, so a deanery is a portion of the diocese, yes. which is a portion of the Catholic Church. That's correct. I like so that, lots of people know what parishes are. Lots of people know what the diocese is. But we, Which we think of the mystery wrapped in a riddle. That's us. In an yes. enigma. That's what I am. That's what you are. <laughs> All right. They lost me on that one. <laughs> As a very old-timey <laughs> phrase for telling people that I don't know what, the, what kind of person you are. It's, there was Churchill trying to explain oh. Russia yes. to the oh. House of Commons. Yes. So he said it was a mystery wrapped in a ri- riddle, maybe su- and then, and something an enigma. in an enigma. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Today I learned fun facts from talking Catholic. It's <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part of the show. Yes, <laughs> the historical references. So, uh, so yeah. So there were the five disciples of mercy, and we've we've reported on them quite a bit. Um, Great. Uh, by the way, a number of people, including um, Alice, my wife, said she loved the disciples of mercy. Uh, complimented uh, Mary for the write-ups. Yeah, thought they were very, very, very well done. Yeah, very. Very cohesive, uh, gave a good, well-rounded picture, and without berating the point. So sometimes you write those things up, and they're three pages long, and Mary has uh, did a great job of distilling them down to about two paragraphs a piece, which is not easy to do. I was a, it's true. It's not easy. I, I, I had to take an entire uh, master's course on writing tight, which is, you know... It's used- one of the hardest things to do, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, which reminds me. Making things concise. It's true. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It's not easy. Matter it fact, is. I agree. She, she had to write the Catholic Star Herald's wrap-up article afterwards, and uh, oh. it was, and I told her, I was like, listen, some, some articles are not going to win you an award, and this is, a, this is a kitchen sink kind of article where you just sort of throw everything in there, because you know you got to note these different people and whatnot. So yeah. she did a great job putting that together. Carl did Thank make, you. Carl did make some edits to it just to tighten it up a little Good. bit more. But I, I that's trust what, Carl. That's why we have edits. <laughs> Managing editor of the Star Thanks, Herald. Carl. Yes. Too bad he's not here today, I was like, yeah, I don't know who Carl is. He might listen. We don't know. Carl's Carl Peters. He's the managing editor of the Star Herald. Yeah. His stuff is good because he, ri- really he writes good. on unusual topics, often having to do with the arts. Yeah. And, uh, and he's the best 
Catholic writer I think I know actually because yeah. yeah. he takes such a unique perspective of it matter of fact he's got another unique one in this oh, week yeah. that I didn't know he was writing and it's another one just kind of blows your way so Good. if you, you haven't read the it. Star Herald this week uh, make sure you make sure you read it when it comes to when you get it in uh, it'll be in this weekend so uh so anyway, so that was the Disciples of Mercy, but then we also had the Share the Journey campaign, which is Share the Journey, Sam, you have had quite a bit of work too, because if I'm not mistaken, you are the program or project director for the Share the Journey campaign, right? Yes, I chair our steering committee for Share the Journey here at Catholic Charities. We um, have sent down 11 trips now with over 100 pilgrims down to the test the Texas-Mexico border to McAllen, Texas, and they have worked at the Humanitarian Respite Center down there. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's been you know, acclaimed far and wide, the, the, this program, because uh, I think uh, I might be you know, showing preferential treatment here, but I think this Catholic Charities uh, has done more related to Share the Journey more ta- more tangible work related to share the journey than I th- I want to believe any other Catholic charities has in the in the nation. I haven't seen it written about as much. You guys really sunk your teeth into the initiative more than any any other diocese that I've seen, and certainly any other Catholic charities that I've seen. So, not don't want to insult anybody else, but the the, the pilgrimages <laughs> are are and Archbishop Alza uh, yes. mentioned that 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 was yes. uh, he was following it in the Star Herald. So we learned that he reads the Star yes. Herald, too. Archbishop Alza being the, uh, who re- received Apostolic the... Apostolic Nuncio at the United Nations for the uh, permanent mission of the Holy See to the United Nations. That's right. Who was asked to receive uh, Cardinal Tagli's uh, uh, award on his behalf. So, Sam, uh, as far as the Share the Journey campaign, you want to give everybody a little recap of what it is that you do, what, what people see? I mean, like when you're actually down there? So people, when we get down there, are amazed with the people that they meet, not only at the border at the respite center, but also the people of the border towns that are right around where all of the action is taking place. They see everything from little kids to older people in wheelchairs coming through the respite center and the border. Um, could be f- anywhere from 20 people to 900 people a day coming through down there. And it's really a life-changing experience to see firsthand, right in front of you, what's happening. Yeah. And Sam, you've been down there how many times? I know you've led a couple. I've been down three times. Three times, wow. Each time has gotten harder to be down there to really understand what is going on in the stories that you hear of the people's journeys. Sure. But you tried to... uh to uh, educate people at the JFA because uh, the two of you and am- amongst the many jobs we gave you that night was to speak uh, and give a reflection on uh, your trips down there. So I-, I asked the two of you, since we didn't record it the night of, I asked the two if the two of you would be willing to read what you wrote for that night or what you spoke that evening. So Sam, you want to... Oh, I'm sorry, Jose, you want to start us off? You- um, yeah, sure. Um now, you didn't mention that I was going to be reading today. You just told me that <laughs> I was going to be a how long, informal how many, conversation. Uh, times has, Jose, you've been down there how many times? I've been there three times as well, yes. And both Sam and Jose, they're at least one time they've had you know, short notice, and they step up, and that's a big task <laughs> when, you have, when you're responsible for all these people from the diocese, but you guys have always done an amazing job. I, I think that that's... Um, part of the ministry that we that we choose to do um and um we've we've had conversations with our family related to that and um we've gotten permission that we can do that so we are blessed to have to be able to work here and that we have a family that is that allows us to do that as well so all right so, be so kind yeah um sure so uh this is uh what i've recited at uh, uh justice for all dinner the Sister Norma's Respite Center in McAllen, Texas. There there were men, women, and children in a room waiting their turn for a case manager. As I sat with them, I heard their stories, the brutality of the gangs and their sons, the corruption of the police departments and government, their thoughts made verbal as they exclaimed, how did our community get this way? Even worse, some families need to make the decision of which child they will bring to the refugee, the refugee march. 
which is strong enough to travel, which is strong enough to stay behind? How do you choose whom of which is strong enough to make the trip? It made me think, could I put my daughter in danger for just two months to come to another country? I can never relate. I am not living their lives. When their journey starts, their souls ache for leaving behind a piece of themselves, their culture, their heritage. And I can understand that part. When I see pictures of Puerto Rico, I say to myself, that is my home, but my life is here in New Jersey. These stories that I listen to, they keep coming back to me to one conclusion. For these refugees, anywhere is better than where they came from. Then I am sitting with them with no judgment or prejudice. They are my neighbor, and I sit with them quietly, taking in some of their hurt. Journeying to the, tes- the Texas-Mexico border is a life-altering experience for both leaders and pilgrims. We are called to journey to the peripheries and serve those that are vulnerable. Imagine living in a place that is described by a young woman living in a border town as having more helicopters than birds. Walking into the Humanitarian Respite Center for the first or third time, you get the overwhelming desire to help. Whether you are serving food, handing out clothes, or playing with the children, the most important service you can do is to listen and understand the journey the people standing in front of you have endured. In July, I spent an entire day with a three-year-old little girl named Yartsy. I do not speak Spanish, and she did not speak English, but we played, laughed, and smiled as if we had known each other all our lives. Her mom smiled as I played with her daughter. She was able to go and shower without fearing for her daughter's safety. After her shower, the 19-year-old mom named Sharon and I spoke as we sat on the floor playing with Yartsy. They had been walking for a month from Guatemala. Her daughter turned three years old on the journey to the United States. There was no cake, no festivities that a three-year-old birthday party usually entails. She also told me her 20th birthday was the very next day. I tore out a piece of notebook paper, folded it in half, pulled out the ever-trusted Google Translate, and wrote her a birthday card telling her I was so happy she was there, that we were family, and have a very happy birthday. She began to cry when I gave it to her, hugging me and me fighting back tears. As dinner was called, her daughter gave me a hug and a kiss on the cheek, and she gave me a hug as they disappeared into the crowd. That will probably be the last time I will ever see them, but it is certainly not the last time I will think or talk about them. This story is just one of thousands that occur at the Texas-Mexico border, and ultimately, that was the point of the Share the Journey initiative, to meet our sisters and brothers, to try and understand their need to leave their homeland and their desire to seek refugee here and to do what we can, ease, we can do to ease their burden, even for just a moment. Thank you for letting me share their story with you today, and thank you for supporting Catholic Charities. I tell you, you know, being in the room when you guys said those, you know, the, the audience was rapt attention. and I saw one or two, you know, fingers go across the face to wipe away a tear, so... It, you know, it's not easy to explain to people who haven't been there what you've seen. And one of the hallmarks of this campaign, which is what it was intended to do, but one of the hallmarks of this campaign is just how well the pilgrims have come back, and in this case the leaders have come back, to explain what they saw, what they engaged with. That was the whole point of this. Matter of fact, you know, I, let, me, let me read what Bishop Sullivan had to say. So I wish I had recorded his remarks because it certainly sounds a lot better coming from him. But I, I, w- I just want to make sure that people who weren't in attendance get an opportunity to hear what our bishop has to say about the work of Catholic Charities, but in particular, the work of Share the Journey. Thank you to each and every one of our Disciples of Mercy and Share the Journey Award recipients. You are a shining example of the great work being done in our parishes, schools, and ministries, and in the Diocese of Camden. Every year, I am blessed to be able to visit all of the parishes and high schools, and as many elementary schools and ministries as we can schedule. I am happy to report that the great works of these honorees are just a handful of the examples of what I see all across South Jersey. Much like those visits, the Justice for All Dinner is one of my favorite events of the year because it highlights the many good works in our diocese. 
some created organically, and some at an urging from a continent away. For the past two years, we have answered Pope Francis's call to support two initiatives. The first, to educate the faithful on how to become missionary disciples, to become Catholics who do not sit behind church walls and wait for people to come to us, but who go out to the peripheries to find people in need and to invite them to Christ's table. The second is the Share the Journey campaign, a worldwide initiative specifically focused on the plight of immigrants and refugees. At its core, this campaign is very much an extension of missionary discipleship. Pope Francis knows well that immigrants and refugees are often faced with dire conditions, both in their home country and in their move to a better life elsewhere. I am very proud of how Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Camden has been at the leading edge of the Share the Journey campaign in two ways. First, Catholic Charities continues their stellar work of caring for immigrants and refugees arriving in South Jersey, even though the numbers of new arrivals have plummeted since 2016. Sadly, so much of the work of that department has been reduced to only a few staff members who continue to offer counsel and support to the small number of refugees still allowed to enter the United States, while still supporting those who emigrated here before the United States began accepting fewer people. Second, the immigration issues at the southern border of the United States. This has been a problem for decades, one that political ineptitude has, continue, has allowed to continue for a generation. While the Catholic Church has been at the front line urging smart, secure immigration reform, as the issue has intensified, Catholics in the southern states took matters into their own hands and lawfully began to help these refugees adapt to life in the U.S. You may recall that last year we honored Sister Norma Pimentel, whose respite center in McAllen, Texas, has been offering support to refugees for years. Two years ago, while considering how to support Pope Francis's Share the Journey initiative, our distinguished Catholic Charities Executive Director, Kevin Hickey, came up with a brilliant idea to send pilgrims from our diocese to Sister Norma's respite center. However, the pilgrimages were more than just offering support. They were an opportunity to learn about the issues firsthand by being present among the people who were working through the struggles, as opposed to learning only from cable news shows. As you may have seen reported in the Catholic Star Herald and from pilgrims you've heard speaking at this event, the pilgrimages have exceeded our hope. hopes. More than 100 people have visited with Sister Norma, spoken with border agents, shared time with refugees, and listened to the concerns of local citizens. This is what Share the Journey was meant to be for immigrants and refugees an opportunity for encounter, for us an unfiltered education. Each of our pilgrims, as part of the agreement to partake in the journey, was asked to come back and either write a reflection or take part in a presentation to talk about what they had witnessed. If you haven't read one of these articles or met with a pilgrim, I encourage you to seek them out. I assure you the interaction will be far more enlightening than what you watch on TV. Just last week on my pastoral visit to Paul VI High School, I had an opportunity to speak with a young student who had been down to the border during the Easter re recess. He told me that the visit and the work changed his understanding of the border issue and those who seek to enter our country as refugees from Latin America. But this wasn't just a dio Diocese of Camden campaign. Share the Journey was an international campaign. Because of that, we wanted to honor tonight the person who was leading the international effort as president of Caritas Internationales, Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle. And then he introduced the, uh, the video that we had prepared uh, for Cardinal Tagle, which is pretty darn spectacular. Um, which, um, actually, the one thing we haven't talked about... Oh, I'm sorry. You want to say something, Mary? Well, now I forget. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there, was, there was one element of the event we haven't really talked about on the podcast, and that was the work of the Filipino community in helping it, A, come together, and B, ensuring that we had such a great turnout. The, uh, the, the Filipino community that showed up was intense. They were... They showed up en masse. Yeah, we had, that was a great crowd. And, you know... Mike, that uh, you'll recall that Bishop Sullivan had a lunch 
uh, back in June, maybe uh, May, June. I can't remember mm -hmm. precisely where he invited uh, yourself and Marianne Gilbride and myself and uh, Father Cosme de la Pena, mm -hmm. Father Michael de Leon, yes, Father Philip Ramos, Father Victorino Coronado, and Father Raymond uh, Vijandre, and. You know, it was another example to me of what an effective leader Bishop Sullivan is. <coughs> it was, first of all, he's a wonderful host. So yeah, we had yeah. a really nice lunch. And he just, you know, simply asked uh, the those uh, Filipino priests, who are wonderful people, asked them to help us. And... Um, you know, and, and it was just so naturally done, uh, so graciously done, and I re have reflected on that. I thought he's 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 very good uh, yeah. as a leader, and yeah, knowing he, how to speaking of coercion, he does a great job of. Uh, uh, actually, that's not true though. <laughs> he doesn't. He, you know, I mean, I've had the pleasure of working with him for four years now, and and it's never been a coercion thing. I mean, he he's aspirational. You know, he doesn't ask you. The, the thing that's great about him is. He doesn't ask you things that are difficult to do. I mean, they might be difficult, you know, they may require effort to make them happen, but it's always a good idea, you know? It's like, yes, of course we need to do that, and I think he does a really good job with the priests in that regard, too. I agree. Yeah. And, and so uh, all the priests, uh, we, we followed up from that lunch and asked them, could they bring some people to the dinner committee in addition to themselves and it was that was very clear by the way from the beginning of this they were going to participate it yeah. wasn't like okay we had a nice lunch we'll we'll send you a couple names <laughs> um, it was clear they intended to uh, remain involved so we're grateful for uh, them introducing to us uh, Lita Abel, who is the uh, chief executive officer of U.S. Lumber uh, another remarkable immigrant story herself uh who U.S. Lumber is in Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, and I think Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, she has grown that company. Uh, comes from um, modest is not the right word. I don't think she'd mind me saying uh, great poverty. Um, and and now uh, is the CEO of U.S. Lumber. And it's another. There's another example of the immigrant story in this country. So she uh, was of great help. Uh, uh, Bella Japson, remarkable, wonderful person. Uh, and Elisa Perez, uh, Elisa is with the uh, Filipino Apostolate of South Jersey. Uh, they sold a lot of tickets. I would say within uh, within a month, they'd already sold, uh, what was it? I think it was like four tables already. Oh, yeah. yeah. With, um, I think within, yeah, that was within a month, and before the end of the summer, they, we had 120 people uh, who had purchased yeah. tickets. It, it was incredible. Yeah, and that, it really was. And, uh, great energy, great humor, uh, and of yes. course... Um, Great food too. Great food, yeah. and I'm a. I, did I mention at the dinner that I'm an honorary Filipino? Uh, I, no, I meant to mention that. You see, I have How all these digressions <laughs> planned in my head, and I, yes, I am that what? because of the um, uh, my rendition of Food for the Gods. Oh, oh I remember oh. that. Yes. That's yeah. right. Yes, yes. yes. and you, uh, uh, f I baked. Uh, this is a dessert. Which I made. I found uh, as it happened, as I was getting to know all these wonderful people, here's an article on uh, this great Filipino dessert called Food for the Gods. So I looked at the recipe. I thought, I think I can make that. So I made it. Father Philip Ramos said it was good. He was just now, being didn't nice. Did you promise somebody that you would make him one? Have you done that? Uh, who, who pray tell that I promise? I don't know. You said it on stage. Yes, you have offered uh, to make that repeatedly, and have never oh, actually. Oh, I did. Yes. Well, wasn't that conditional, uh, Jose? I believe. Yeah, I, for us when we do the podcast. Yes, and this is the podcast. I don't know why you you didn't uh, pony up. I, I Here we I, are, bellies growling, I was, waiting for. I believe gods. I was uh, saying that I would make it if Father Cosme, Father Michael, Father Philip, Father Victorino, Father Raymond, Lita, Elisa. And uh, Bella came back to next year's dinner, which, of course, we really want them uh, to because they bring great energy. 
Uh, I, I think, stand corrected. I think, <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. But I will bake it. I will bake it uh, as the weather gets a little colder. The holidays. I'll try to get the, the holidays. The holidays. It'd be a perfect. It, it kind of reminds you. Here we the, go with the Mike's baking tangents. <laughs> he needs his own oh. podcast where it's just him talking about cooking and oh, food. I, I, have I would love that, actually. Please, let's make that happen. The uh, no, it's, it's baking it's, specifically. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love to bake. You know that. I, I love. Don't get it. No, no, no. Bake. We gotta. We gotta I'll make, make it. Well, I should give you this recipe, and, and you could make this. Thing. I, you know, it actually kind of surprises me that I didn't attempt to make it because it, right. it reminds me. It, it's um. It's relatively simple. It's, to it make. reminds me of kind of like a walnut date bread. It's that kind of consistency, but yes. a few different pieces in it. But and uh, you, you and I forget which priest. Father made, Philip. Father Philip made it for the same meeting yeah. but his was made yours was definitely americanized yes because it was very uh big whereas <laughs> the the and there were, and there were size. yeah and there were big uh, slices of it whereas it turns out the filipinos it's actually very small almost like the maybe the size of your thumb and a little bit more maybe and then wrapped they had it wrapped in tin it was foil. beautifully wrapped and it it, was. a it was beautifully wrapped and b it had a slightly different consistency to it moisture i yeah I would it, say. it was a little bit more moist but yeah. they were i will say that yours I, I would say that they were both equally delicious. Equally delicious, equally he delicious. says. So your, right. your, your Filipino is, heritage is, uh, is coming through. Is assured. Yes. Yeah. I wish everyone could see how Mike's posture and face just lights up the second he starts talking he is, he is, about you're food. You're right. He is a core <laughs> animated when he talks about this. Seriously. Hey, listen, I keep telling you people, watch the Great British Bake Off. It is the, oh, it's, it's, you, can get, you can watch the first six seasons in totality on Netflix. Then there's one of the previous seasons you can watch that's sort of separated from it. And they are currently in their seventh Netflix season. They're about uh, six episodes in. I really recommend it to you. There was a moment, I literally watching the last one, where I had a little tear. (laughs) I'm not kidding. A little tear come down my eye. Yeah, I'm. Welcome to Talking Carbs, everyone, featuring Michael Walsh. (laughs) I'm emotionally moved by the Great British Bake Off. So there you go. That's great. It's great. I love it. It's such a great show. You know what? The so Filipino community. I'm sorry. No, no, continue. I'm, I'm cutting sorry. off your no, food please. tangent. Go right ahead. Because what amazed me about them, especially, is even after we found out that Cardinal Tagli wouldn't be able to attend the dinner, I was bracing myself for phone calls of people saying, Well, I'm not going anymore. I want my money back. And there really was not a lot of that at all. Yeah. They no. still wanted to go, they still wanted to be present. Um, since we were still honoring him and they still wanted to support our work and I think that's in large part because of the people you mentioned and their ability to communicate that and spread the word and encourage people yeah, I mean that's I been agree. incredible yeah and and yeah. I give credit also in that regard to Cardinal Tagle and yourself thinking ahead and and making sure that um uh, Archbishop Alza could be there, a Filipino himself. And then, you know, I have to hand it to our syndicate uh, strategies yes. video folks who put together the Cardinal Tagle bio piece, about eight minute video. Um, they did a great job, um, as did Archbishop Alza, who talked about it specifically, uh, focusing on uh, his Filipino heritage and his importance to the Philippines. And I, I think, I think. I think it's a, it's a, a nice opportunity when the diocese gets to give a little cultural shout out to a community that is very important to the diocese. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about Latino culture in, in our diocese, but the Filipino culture is very strong in South Jersey. They are. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to be able to, you know, give a little shout out. Yeah, it was, I, I said that evening, it, for me, it was my own encounter, my own share of the journey. I, I got to know all these people. Uh, yeah. Just lovely people right yeah. and I'm glad um, you know we were lucky enough that Cardinal Tagli sent us the video that he recorded in the Philippines and it was nice how he directly addressed the audience um, mm. I think he referred to Bishop Sullivan as his brother and mm-hmm. his famous line I bring you warm welcome from the Philippines <laughs> yes. and you can tell everyone's faces just light up um, lit up when they when they saw him and heard him and especially for the Filipino community I think that meant a lot 
And you know, you know, something we haven't talked about yet either is the the MC for the night was uh, Elaine Quijano from um, CBS. She's the anchor of the Sunday night CBS News, CBS Evening News, and uh, a Filipino, someone of Filipino uh, origin herself or heritage herself. And uh, which we was not, you know, it was done intentionally. We really wanted to make this an opportunity to showcase the Filipino community. And of course, she led things right off by speaking in her in, in her family's native tongue to our Filipino. Two different dialects. Two, yeah, her that's right. mother's that. dialect and her, her father's dialect. Oh, yes. my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. The, Two great applause. T- yes, they were very ex- our, 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 like, the Filipino guests were very excited about that, and she was a delight. I mean, she literally was a delight. We, we got to spend a little bit of time with her, and uh, but she couldn't have been the, a nicer person for someone who really didn't know us from Adam. She came down, and man, she was she blew us all away. Yeah, you know, she, yeah, very charming, she's very wonderful. humble, yes. down to earth. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, people, if you ever get a chance, uh, if you ever run an event and you need an MC, look to the look to television broadcasters. They're the best, right, Kevin? <laughs> That's Aren't correct, they the Michael. That's right. <laughs> you know, that re- reminds me of uh, our, our colleague Jamie Reynolds uh, was boasting uh, earlier this week oh, that yeah. he he had. Uh, a half an hour, maybe 40 minutes with Elaine at the reception. And, and the implication was only he got to talk to her. <laughs> um, yeah, I so, look over yeah. and she's trying to go through the script just to prepare. And, and there's Jamie, Jamie chattering Bay. away in her ear. So <laughs> it's fun making fun of him for that. I, Mike, I just, I'll, you know, I've, I've, to echo what you said, I'm really grateful to Archbishop Hauser, the Apostolic Nuncio at the. Uh, permanent observer of the mission of the Holy See of the United Nations for coming here because as as we found out uh, the Pope has asked him to uh, move to uh, Spain and be the Apostolic Nuncio so uh, and at the same time the United Nations General Assembly was uh, assembling yes. as it were uh, <laughs> that, now I gotta, I gotta I always wanted to say that you know where that comes from where does it comes that come from, from the movie um Cary Grant, uh, North by Northwest. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Uh, which, really. you got to watch that, because uh, it involves the United Nations. Uh, it's a key element, and, and sort of the dramatic scene takes place in the United Nations. I've not seen that in a long time. I have to go so back and watch it. North, of, it, North by point, Northwest. North by Northwest. It's There's a, a Family Guy road. episode called North to North Co- Cohog, so that's... <laughs> Now that makes sense. I like it. Yeah, they stole <laughs> it. You, you know, you were commenting. Didn't hear on, about the movie, now, but Jose, I know that episode, and I guess that's where they got the way, it from. Uh, did you know, Mary, that that's one of Jose's favorite shows? <gasps> Family what? Guy. Family Guy. Oh, I like Family that. Guy, and I love Bob's Burgers. Oh my goodness! The guy likes his animation. I like it. I can't believe we didn't discover this until now. And he also liked, uh, if I can say this on this uh, Catholic uh, uh, program, South, um, South by Southwest. Uh, South Park. Oh, South, South Park. Park. Sure. Yeah. We can talk about that. Everybody loves South I Park. I knew I liked you, Mr. Sanchez. <laughs> he, Jose introduced me to South Park. He would no, make reference. Well, he'd make reference. I can't picture you watching South oh, Park. Oh, he'd make references to it, and I'd be, like, cracking up as he's describing. Of course, he has a wonderful way of describing zany things and I thought <laughs> I gotta watch this show and then I watched it and I was like but I do like Family Guy too yeah uh, they're both classics. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine Mr. Hickey watching uh, any episodes with Mr. Hanky in them. I'm trying to sort of no, I don't know the characters. Uh, um, we will not get to this in this podcast. No. Maybe uh, we'll another, another, another time. time. After the podcast, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Have you noticed, by the way, you talked about me talking about baking shows, that uh, how Mr. Hickey lights up anytime he talks about an old movie? It's true. That and certain books I've noticed. And historical references. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's true. Like Churchill. He Anytime is a, get to a drop history a buff. <laughs> <laughs> I live him. in the past. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, so he he was great, and I um, uh, what came through when Archbishop I was talking about was his own friendship with Cardinal Tagli. Yeah. yeah, it was clear that you know that he revered him and uh, had a great affection for him. So yeah, you know, it's cool. not easy when a, when an honoree has to uh, you know ditch you for legit reasons like that it's not easy to sort of replace that but i will say that of all the events i've ever done i think this event did the best job of sort of filling in for that lost principal honoree you know mike it was observed to me by a 
a number of people that it, it the it really worked to have uh, his Eminence on the the wonderful video introduction, but but then have Archbishop Alza there. Yeah, uh, he, right. It was like a two for kind of thing. So yeah, it was a good evening. Good luck at. Yeah, and he was so generous with his time. You know, I mean, people were Archbishop, flocking to oh my him. Gosh. I have some pictures and the facial expressions of excitement and shock. You know, oh, I think that was a surprise to a lot of people who didn't expect him yeah. to to yeah. be there. And he was so generous. You know, everyone taking pictures with him and. You know, asking for his blessings. One one nice moment uh, in that was Bishop Sullivan recognizing uh, we had a, a wonderful sponsor who gave back their tickets. They weren't going to use them, but they asked that a refugee family be selected, and uh, so uh, people who came were Syrian refugee family, and and they've been here. Sam, how how long would you say they've been here? Three, they've been three. Two or three years. Two or three years. And Bishop Sullivan, shows you how in touch Bishop is, he recognized him. Oh, really? And he steered Archbishop over and said, I, I want a picture with, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's very nice. Very sweet. And they, you, really the, nice. they, they were thrilled. But I don't believe uh, Mr. McCusker took that picture. I had to press gang a 14-year-old Catholic high school student into this action. Oh, it wasn't just one. I got bombarded by like five different people at once saying, yes. Kevin Hickey's looking for you. And so I was already sweating in a panic, sprinting through, knocking people out of the way. I saw But Bishop. I got that photo. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, you got that? Oh, yes, so I you did. remember. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, you I saw Bishop Sullivan talking to this young man, and I could tell he knew him. And so now all these people, as Mary said, are mobbing Archbishop Alzheimer, and they're handing me their cell phones to take pictures. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I'm not very smart. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Upside down pictures, <laughs> thumbs, <laughs> a bunch of selfies by accident. <laughs> oh, well, when you went to, you were at the Vatican a, a couple years ago. Uh huh. And I remember yeah. you said, I saw the Pope. I said, do you have any pictures? And he said, oh, I think so. And you pulled out your phone and all I saw were little thumbnails of selfies. I said, did you point your camera in the right direction? You looked at them. You said, oh, I guess not. So I think you got maybe a couple of blurry pictures of the Pope, but nope, it was facing the wrong way. I'm still hoping to be appointed to staff photographer, <laughs> Star Herald. Keep hoping. The, um, the, uh, that, well, that is, that's an example of how difficult it is to do these oh events. Th these events are, you know, it's a whirlwind of activity. It is. And if you have it staffed correctly, you're usually usually pretty good and we and thankfully i will say that well the, done mr hickey the star herald staff are not i'm sorry it's not star herald staff. the uh the star herald wasn't there no the uh the catholic charity staff was your staff is amazing the, they, they show up and they do what they need to do and they get the job done and people don't complain about them to their face and it is you know no I'm just kidding. it's it because was, jose sanchez was in charge and we don't know what job. he said to them he, but they they he, listened I, my memory mary uh uh, one memory of that evening is looking down this hallway and seeing Jose. He might as well have been at a lectern, but he wasn't. He was just standing there. But he had this, this you know, he was clearly in charge. Uh, and he had his um, program in front of him. He was studying that and looking around, seeing that, you know, his troops, as it were, were doing what he wanted them to do. And then at some point I heard him uh, in a forceful tone of voice, say, you have seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about that. Seven minutes to go and put the programs on the chairs. That's well, what it was. 550 programs in seven in minutes. In seven minutes. And they did it. And they, they happily went away and did it. Mm -hmm. And came back even happier. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I don't know what happened there. <laughs> the uh, you know we also have to give a little credit to uh, not a little credit a lot of credit to the development department um, in particular Marianne Gilbride and Stacy Napolitano who great, uh, great work and, and Stacy who is somewhat new to yeah. the diocese really she stepped right in and mm. she was putting out fires left and right and getting everything done and uh, and there were all, of course all the development staff there too but the Stacy in particular did a yeah. bang up job. You know, Mike, the other person I want to thank uh, is Rose Porcellini, who works with in Catholic Charities uh, behind the scenes, but, uh, you, you know, made immense contributions to uh, 
handling checks, handling donation contributions, talking to people. Did a great job too. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, I think we also have to thank uh, Mary McCusker, who, quite frankly, was uh, if this if it wasn't not for her, I'm pretty sure this event would not have gone as smoothly as it did when we didn't have Stacy on board. She picked up all of the event coordinator uh, jobs, in addition to doing her own job, in addition to doing everybody else's job, in addition to doing all the crazy stuff you make her do on a regular basis just for Catholic charities. It takes her away from the stuff I want her to do for the communications department. Thank you, Mary. But, Thank uh, you both. You're it was, awesome. It was truly impressive. Yeah. Well, in fact, it. the two people, uh, Jose and Samantha, are um, distractions for poor Mary. Oh, uh, she sits near them. They're constantly badgering her with various different things. And Mary just trying to get work done. Right? Trying to work, get work oh, done. Oh, no, that's not fair. Uh, it's not fair? <laughs> no, <laughs> not one bit. Just, we, well, that's we don't the amazing. distract Mary. Mary's distracting with all those plants she has in her <laughs> desk area. That's right. She has a there are garden. studies that show that plants by the work area helps concentration. It, and it also oxygenates your blood by having plants by you. It Absolutely. I, I'm on board with her having plants. Mike, she uh, yesterday cited a study for us about uh, dogs and how owning dogs uh, promotes uh, you know, a long-lived life. Does she try to convince you to let her dog in the building all the time? Oh, I'm not Numerous sure. Numerous times. Just, you know, Numerous <laughs> times. <laughs> you know what? You're now a dog lover. I don't want to hear it, Mr. Sanchez. <laughs> he is a puppy. <laughs> now, Sam also deserves kudos, but for a completely different perspective. Uh, not, I mean, for JFA-related, she did a great job, JFA-related, particularly for her presentation. But uh, she also recently gave uh, two presentations at the uh, Catholic Channel. Catholic Charities Annual Gathering in Albuquerque. I got to sit in both of them. Uh, I think I'm the only person at this table that showed up for both of them and showed his appreciation. I for was sleeping away in New Jersey does. while you were enjoying <laughs> Albuquerque, but okay. I wish I could have been there. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, me neither. Sam, you gave two presentations, one of them on Share of the Journey, one of them on volunteerism, and you did phenomenal and then you turned around and had to come all the way back here can you talk a little bit about the presentations you gave sure so the one was on volunteer engagement and how volunteer managers both the volunteer coordinators themselves but also the higher-ups should be involved in volunteer engagement getting people into the organization and keeping them there Um, and the other was on share the journey um, with my co-presenter greg coogan um we have led seven trips combined and we tried to show everybody there how to engage youth in the share the journey initiative and how young people are the future and how they should be involved in everything share the journey related but also in their catholic identity and the formation that they can bring to us all in those uh, it was amazing, and um, the the volunteer, both of them were very well attended, um, and the, the volunteer one I, I actually found very interesting because vol- in, in a past life, I used to be in charge of volunteers as well, and I wish someone had given that presentation when I was in charge of volunteers. Uh, many, many moons ago, Mr. Hickey, when I was still working for Volunteers of America, Delaware Valley, under the uh, auspices of the great uh, Dan Lombardo, who... <laughs> <laughs> Kevin always appreciates it when I uh, get a chance to bring Simmer him down, up. Simmer down, Mr. Hickey. Um, but the other one, you know, I, I sat in a lot of those sessions o- over the course of the week, um, three, three, four days, and uh, I will say that of all the sessions I was in, you guys got mobbed afterwards more than any other, a- after the Share the Journey one in particular, because uh, everybody really wanted to know sort of like a lot of like what went into it and I thought there were a lot of good questions that were asked as well so I think it was a very inspiring presentation so you know it's good you, you all of your staff on top of everything else Mr. Hickey they're all seem to be pretty good presenters they're all good public speakers as well I agree I agree the Very only thing talented. working against Sam was she uh, she was co-presenting with two people who uh, didn't have an off switch so uh, getting getting a way to cut in in there was was difficult but she uh, she did it so it was, it was good <laughs> Sam yeah. can do just about anything if there's you know oh my goodness we need a bunch of volunteers at this event she will just have them there ready to go and yeah. Sam has brought since Sam came to Catholic charities I think we had about five volunteers for the refugee program now i don't even know how many how many are we, we have about 65 for the vo- for the refugee program itself 
if anyone would like to volunteer, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> no, plug, plug, hey, give them your phone number. Give me your email address. Uh, A56. 342-4156. That's my desk phone number. Seriously, though, if you do want to volunteer with us, our opportunities are on our website, and we're always looking for new people to come aboard and help out any way they can. That's awesome. Alrighty, I think we're going to wrap up. Uh, did anybody have any last thoughts? Was there anyone we forgot to thank or highlight or Probably. criticize? Anybody? Well, I just thank all the sp- the great sponsors. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we really do need to. Yeah. Uh, they do deserve a great uh, yep. thank you for that. This this event wouldn't be able to go on without the yep. without their great work. And all the money, as you we know, goes to direct assistance. So it's great money for us to have. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and I think we're going to, I know, because I'm going to be the one to do it, um, we're going to end the podcast with uh, Cardinal Togley's remarks. So uh, here he is, and then have a great week, everybody. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the Diocese of Camden, New Jersey, and in a special way to my brother, Bishop Dennis Sullivan, I bring you warm greetings from the Archdiocese of Manila. As I greet you and as I celebrate with you, I also would like to apologize for not being present uh, with you physically on this All for Justice dinner and also for not being able to receive in person the St. John Neumann Award. I would like to thank all of you for this opportunity to be one with you in our common mission. And I gladly accept this award, not in my own name, but on behalf of the many people in the Caritas International family and many people of goodwill who share the journey of our brothers and sisters who are forced to leave their homeland because of violence, climactic change, and who end up being victims of human trafficking, of new forms of slavery, simply because humanitarian assistance, welcome, and corridors are not open to them, are not extended to them. I thank you, Bishop Dennis, and Caritas, uh, Catholic Charities of Camden, for your creative ways of implementing this program, Sharing the Journey. Thank you for helping build up this culture of human encounter. In our world today, strangers, especially refugees and forced migrants, are perceived with fear Some people are afraid of them even before meeting someone in person. We operate on caricatures, and caricatures make us afraid. Sharing the journey means meeting them in person, listening to their stories, touching their hands, seeing their tears, and by listening to them, we discover a brother, a sister, a neighbor. We discover even ourselves. We're not strangers, after all, to each other. Their stories are my stories, too. Their dreams are my own dreams. So why should we not share a common journey? I know this is difficult given the climate that we are experiencing worldwide, but we don't need to solve all the problems. Your effort is already a big, big contribution to humanize what is otherwise becoming a dehumanizing experience for the vulnerable people. And for that, I want to thank you in the name of Caritas International. And as we declare to the world that human beings 
have a right to migrate. We also declare that many people are forced to migrate. They also have a right to remain in their homes, but they are forced. May they find, brothers, sisters, homes in us. And it is a small act of a person-to-person -person encountering, encounter, an encounter which, in the words of St. John, becomes our communion with the Father and our communion with Jesus Christ. So thanks to all of you, and may God bless you.